Who would have thought we're in June already? How's it going everybody? It's Razine here for Astro Photography. In today's episode of The Night Sky, we're looking at the night sky in June. Funnily enough, a curated list of deep sky objects, planets, and things like that, which are available during the night skies of June. Now, all the focal lengths I'm going to be talking about are based off of the full frame sensor, 35 millimeters, but there will be equivalents on the sidebar here. So if you've got a different sensor, you can kind of get a good idea what focal length I'm talking about for your camera. So without further ado, we're going to get started with deep sky objects. The super wide camera lenses are 40 millimeters. It's Hercules, Lyra and Coma Borealis. Now, three constellations in one frame can be very interesting, especially if you then annotate them. People like to see these kind of shots. They normally find them quite impressive. There may be a few deep sky objects that might show up at those focal lengths. You'll have to put a lot of integration time into it though. But if I was doing 40 millimeters, that was my lens, I would start thinking about getting three constellations into one frame. Next up, we're looking at 200 millimeters and this is NGC 7822 in the constellation of Cepheus. This is a very large emission area nebula and it would lend itself extremely well to narrowband imaging. So this is something if I was doing it, I'd probably end up popping an L Enhance or an L Extreme filter onto a color camera or maybe an SHO in narrowband, something like that. So very large nebula. Nebulas are great. I'm, I'm really happy that they're returning to our night skies. Also because I don't really have very deep focal lengths to shoot galaxies. So 200 millimeters NGC 7822. At 300 millimeters, because Cygnus is such a good position and a prominent constellation during this time of the year, I'm gonna point you to the Veil Complex, not just the East or West Veil Nebula, the whole thing. At 300 millimeters with a full frame camera, you could fit both of them in, Pickering's Triangle, all things like that. Now with an RGB camera, you're gonna get some nice images from it straight out of the bat, but because there's a lot of hydrogen and oxygen data in these two targets, again, using a dual band pass narrow band filter or now, band filters in general with a mono camera could lend yourself a very nice image indeed. So 300 millimeters, go over to the Veil complex. At 400 millimeters, we're very early in the season here, getting on it early if you're doing a very long project for this. M31 Andromeda is on its way back up already. It's more towards the end of the night, but hey, it's raising and it's something that I thought would be good at 400 millimeters. So, maybe you want to sink a lot of integration time on this target. So now you can actually begin that project if you so desire. So 400 millimeters, Andromeda. At 500 millimeters, it's more so towards the end of the month, but it does also depend on your latitude. The lower you are, the earlier you can start this. And that is the Eagle and Omega Nebulas in the constellations of Serpens and Sagittarius respectively. So these are nice, very impressive emission-based nebulae in, in the lower southern skies. So for my positioning in the United Kingdom, I'm not really gonna see them unless I go down to the south coast. But if you're in a better position than, my, than me, or you have a better clear sky to the south, why don't you give these ones a go? At 700 millimeters, we're actually going back to Cygnus. Now, I gave this example earlier as a wider field of view, the Veil Complex, but if you're at 700 millimeters, when you go punch in two, the West Veil Nebula, which is NGC 6960. So large field of views are always impressive. It's nice seeing the scope and magnitude of these. But if you've got a bigger aperture and more focal length, you can actually punch into them because there's a lot of fine detail on show with these targets. There's very small tendrils of gas and, and dust and things like that, that could lend itself to a lot of resolution, a big aperture instrument and longer focal lengths. So, 700 millimeters, that's why I'm pointing you to. At 800 millimeters, I'm gonna swing you over to Cassiopeia now to IC59, which is the ghost of Cassiopeia. This is a very dim uh, nebulae located right next to the Bright Star Navi. So that makes it a challenge trying to get a long enough exposure to get detail out of the nebulae while still keeping Navi under control. It's a similar challenge to what you'd have with the Horsehead Nebula, for example, because of Alnatak. So again, it's a very dim nebulae with a very bright star in the field. And it's got some interesting characteristics to it, a very fancy shape. So at 800 millimeters, I'm gonna point you over to that one and let me know how you get on. Onto the larger instruments again, the longer focal lengths, 1,500 millimeters, 
back into Cepheus for the Wizard Nebula. Now a lot of the time this is actually shot with a wider field of view, but if you actually punch in with a more deeper instrument, you fill the frame with that object and you can actually see the wizard itself, get a nice details out of it. So that's what I would do with one and a half thousand millimeters of focal length. So when you give that one a go. And at 2000 millimeters, I'm gonna be pointing you over to Coldwell 12, C12, the fireworks galaxy. Now this is a magnitude 9.6, 10-ish galaxy located in Cygnus. And there's a lot of detail to be had here. So at those longer focal lengths, you usually have the aperture to do this justice. So that is what I'm suggesting for you at 2000 millimeters this month. Now, for you planet hunters out there, rejoice because towards the end of the month, from about half past two in the morning, Saturn and Jupiter are back above 20 degrees altitude, making them, in my opinion, somewhat viable targets. Okay, you might want to leave them until they raise a bit more, but I'm just telling you what's out there that you can photograph. So, towards the end of the month, half past two onwards, Saturn and Jupiter are back. And now for the lunar phases, if you don't want to wait for those planets and you want to use your big telescopes for lunar mosaics again or things like that, here's the moon phases for you. The last quarter falls on the 2nd of June and the new moon falls on the 10th of June. First quarter is the 17th of June and the full strawberry moon is the 24th of June. And that's it. That is the night sky in June all wrapped up for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed my suggestions and they've given you some kind of idea and inspiration of what to get out there and photograph during this month. And drop your suggestions down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and you think I could have done better, give it a thumbs down and consider subscribing for more videos like the night sky and reviews. In the meantime, I'll also say thank you very much for watching. I hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.